Chris, good evening. we really appreciate your time. I know you're, uh, you're enjoying the game here this I'm evening. I'm enjoying watching the game. It's a lot of fun to watch, and it's 3-3 at this point. Nice, tight game. It's a little bit too tight for us. We'd rather, you know, yeah. we'd rather be winning at the minute. Yeah. Um, I was going to say, you're obviously not your first time at Belfast. You flew no. over, overhead a, a number of times, but uh, you're, you're coming into Belfast for an event tomorrow evening, an evening with Chris Hadfield, uh, uh, organized by the Northern Ireland Science Festival. Yeah. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that show? Yeah, well, shoot, the Science Festival is really impressive. And it's 11 days long, and I'm having a chance to help kick it off uh, tomorrow night. Um, it's a tour I've been speaking across the UK. Uh, it's, it's, of course, talking about the things that I've had a chance to do. I flew in space three different times and uh, done some spacewalks and commanded a spaceship. So there's some interesting perspectives from that. But the real important part is what does it mean for somebody here right now? What do those ideas mean? How do you change who you are to do the things that you're dreaming about? How does somebody like Elon Musk come from South Africa and build the most powerful rocket in the world on his very first try, successfully put it not just into orbit, but past Mars out to the asteroid belt? How does a person do that? How do you, how do you put yourself in that position? And uh, the talk is sold out all over the place. We have thousands of people coming tomorrow night. Well, I'm, I'm really looking forward to the chance. I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. We're coming along tomorrow oh, night. Oh, good. I'm glad to hear I, it. You know, I read some of the, the details about yourself um, when we heard where there was a chance we were going to get you on yeah. Belfast Chance TV. And as a nine-year-old, uh, you know, dreaming, watching the, the launch of the uh, one of the space shuttles back then, and then having the chance to go and do that yourself. And what was the drive like from when you put your spacesuit on, driving out to the launch pad? <laughs> what was that like? Well, we have a driver, you know. It's <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, the most amazing moment is you're, you're wearing your pressure suit, you get out of the van, and you're at the base of the rocket ship. It's an amazing thing to step out and to look up at this huge human invention that's about to do something that is right on the very edge of impossible, you know. You're going to ride up the elevator, climb into this thing on your hands and knees, get strapped in in a chair, close up the hatch. Everyone's going to get at least three miles away because it's a big, dangerous beast. And then uh, start the engines and fly the thing off the planet. It's, it's an amazing moment to realize that this is finally happening. As you say, because I started working towards it and dreaming about it when I was nine years old. And I did it three times. I flew the American Space Shuttle twice and the Russian Soyuz once. And even even to say that out loud, it's hard yeah, for me well, to you're, believe. You're, but you're, I've done it. The hard just taking up in the back of my head. So Yeah, it's, it's an amazing thing. But it's something we do now. we got six people living on the space station going by here every day. And uh, and it's just the beginning. You know, there's, there's the moon and Mars to eventually get to and everything that lies beyond. And our technology is just getting good enough now that it's no longer crazy, it's now part of something that we can do. And I'll, I'll be talking about it to everybody here tomorrow night, the things that they can do to be part of, uh, of something like that happening around the world. Elon Musk last week was talking about the opportunities available. And, you know, how far do you think that is off reality of, of potentially, you know, man on Mars? On Mars, it's probably going to be woman on Mars, I think. Okay. The most experienced astronaut in American history is a woman named Peggy Whitson. She commanded the space station twice. She was the chief astronaut. Chief of the Johnson Space Center is a woman named Ellen Ochoa. Really impressive human beings. I think we'll put a colony on the moon first because we've got to allow ourselves to get a lot of things wrong on the way. Um, but eventually, Mars... It, Kind of depends how fast we invent, invent sure. things, you know. But the pace of invention is accelerating right now with, with our level of communications technology and transportation. Things have never gone this fast ever in history before. So I don't know how long, I don't know the answer to your question, how long it's going to take before the first of us is walking on Mars. I think we'll be on, moon, on the moon, you know, by the end of the next decade. And not just to show that we can, but actually move there, start living there, set up a permanent research station, just like we did in Antarctica starting about uh, 50 years ago, and start to understand the universe and the Earth better from that rare vantage point. And one of, one of, your, your, one of your main loves is ice hockey. I the do. Toronto Maple Leafs, I'm, yeah. I, I'm a big fan of Maple Leafs. My great-grandfather was a trainer for the Leafs, in fact, so uh, 
So it's been a lifelong uh, love of mine, yeah. Uh, and we managed to see a video on one of the pre-games uh, when you were doing a puck drop. Yep. How long did it take to drop the puck from space <laughs> to here? Well, the hard part was trying to find a puck on a space station. <laughs> <laughs> did you have to make your own? I made my own. I actually, yeah, yeah, uh, truth is out, I used uh, a camera lens cap because if you held it just right, it looked just Look. like a puck. <laughs> but I, I fired that down, and then one of the former goalies of the Leafs was down there. That's uh, right. And Darcy uh, Tucker. Uh, yeah, and he caught it and then took it and uh, and Johnny Bauer who just passed Johnny away Bauer, yeah. one of the legendary Leafs goalies he was part of taking it out and dropping it on the ice to start the game that was that was a really privileged and you, to, you get to, to watch the Belfast that. Giants when you're here as well I'm enjoying watching a lot of Canadians on the team oh, here absolutely. Too, but I'm really enjoying watching the game here you and went to uh, school in Oakville uh, yeah um, in, uh, one of the boys uh, John Kurtz is from Oakville yep, Ontario as well so my, my folks live on a farm right next to Oakville so yeah I uh, that's that's where my wife and I met. So yeah, I know it well. No, I'm enjoying the game a lot. Nice, have a nice tight game coming into the third period. That's what you want. Nothing worse than a three nothing lead. Everyone gets too relaxed. <laughs> so no, I, to me, I, I like sport. I, I've played and, but uh, to me, I think hockey is the best. The speed of it, the individual skill of it. Uh, there's there's a real aggressiveness to it, but also a superb almost craftsmanship to the skill that's needed. I love the combination of everything that is hockey, and it's nice to watch a game here. And what do you think of the standard of hockey in the IHL? Oh, oh, it's good. It's it's like the equivalent league in Canada and the United States. You know, the AHL at that level, it's the same sort of players, same sort of skill. It's what feeds into the very best players of the world are coming from teams just like this. So the talent's there. It's it's really good to watch. Have you had a chance to watch the uh, Olympics this year so far? I, I've been speaking every night. Yeah. Uh, the tour, the talk I'm giving her tomorrow night. Yeah, I've already spoken in Southampton and Manchester and Glasgow on Friday, so my, my my evenings have been full. I've just been watching a few of the of the replays. I hear that the Korean ladies scored their first scored goal, their first goal which today, is yeah. good for them. It's fantastic. You know, that's that's it's uh, it's world class play. They're playing really out of their depth. It's just lovely that they got a goal. I'm I'm delighted for them. One of the things is to say you were. When you're orbiting over Earth and you're heading, and I know you're going to give us away tomorrow night, and we're going to give you the details of the show because there is a few tickets still left, and if you get the chance, then certainly come along. But when you're orbiting above Earth, and, and how far is it? 46 miles? You're, you're uh, our, our space station's about uh, 300 miles up, uh, about 1.3 million feet up. So, but uh, you go around the entire world every 92 minutes. You know, the world. If you can go around the whole thing. In a time it takes you to eat dinner at a restaurant, it can't be very big. 92 minutes. I've been around the world uh, 2,650 2, times. <laughs> it's not a big place. Yeah. And we tend to get a loss of perspective just in one place down on the surface. And I'll definitely be talking about that tomorrow night, what that perspective brings, what it means maybe in individual decision-making. What do you do with that new understanding of this, the actual small size, incredible age of the world, and the type of things like this that, that bring us all together, and, or the Olympics going on right now in a real unified activity of competition. And, and one of the things that you uh, became famous for, not just obviously going to space and the International Space Station, was uh, social media. Yeah. Um, you've been pretty active in social media, and uh, you've had some great stories, and you tweeted some very famous people when you were up there. Yeah, I, yeah, you get to know everybody. I think social media is terrific. It's it's not so much media as it is social. It's where anybody can can take one of these out of their pocket and talk to anybody in the world. You got an interesting idea? Anybody in the world can hear that idea. That that's a, an amazing new social invention. It's like the world has the opportunity to become a village of ideas, and we're figuring out what to do with it. You know, people misuse it like they do anything else, but at the same time. It's a way to take a really rare experience, like one of the human beings who's off the planet, and immediately allow other people to access it. It's not something untouchable. This is an idea that can apply to everybody of how you turn yourself into someone who can do that, and how you can then see the world in a way that otherwise you wouldn't see it. So I think social media is a wonderful construct. Chris, I really do appreciate your time. I know you've got guests to spend with, and and the, the box neck this. We really do appreciate your time in Belfast, John's TV. I'm glad an to be evening. back in Belfast. It's oh, nice well, to be absolutely. Here. It's, you're Thanks. more than welcome anytime. Uh, an evening with Chris Hadfield is available tomorrow evening at the SSC Arena in Belfast. The tickets are still available. Uh, you can get them on box office 9073 9074. Chris, again, thank you very much indeed for your time.
My pleasure, and go Giants. We've got one more period to Hope go. So. Thank All you. Right. Cheers. Thanks.